In this video, we're going to be working on exercise number six in chapter two. I'm going to begin by just reading the uh, description of the problem, and it says, write a class that declares a variable named inches, which holds a length in inches and assign a value. Display the value in feet and inches. For example, 86 inches becomes 7 feet and 2 inches, and be sure to use a name constant where appropriate. So in the previous exercises, he told you exactly when to use a named constant, just in case you didn't know. Uh, but the thing that you should keep in your head is the name constant should really apply to something that is not going to change. So um, the question is, what in this scenario would not change? Say that again? Yeah, my foot probably will stay about the same size. You mean the number of inches in the foot? Right, okay, that, that's right. That would be a logical. <laughs> I'm always very technical with those details. Um, all right, so they want us to call this thing inches to feet, so I'm just going to copy that little snippet of text here um, so I can paste it right over into Eclipse. I am using Eclipse to do the development work here. So I'm going to come up here to the source menu in my Chapter 2 exercises. I'm going to add a new class file, and I'm going to paste in what I copied, inches to feet, and I'm also going to make sure that I select public static void main, so it automatically generates that. Now, as I'm recording this video, I'm having this realization in the back of my head that if you watch the previous two videos, I may have done them in JGrasp, so you might be getting thrown into Eclipse cold here, in which case I apologize. <laughs> Uh, but uh, basically what I've done here, and I'll kind of show this process before I go any further, is in Eclipse, if you get Eclipse launched, you create a Java project, you give it a name. Once you've given it a name, it creates kind of like a root folder. It's really a project folder. And then from the source folder, I right-click and create a new class file, which is the process that I just did. All right, so now we have... Um, our inches to feet program and we have to do a little bit of uh, troubleshooting here. It does say to use a named constant where appropriate and I think we already identified one of them, right? And a constant of course always begins with the keyword final. That's what tells it that it can't change. And we said the number of inches in a foot is a constant, right? What numeric type is logical for that? An int. An integer would be logical. It's going to be a counting number. Um, and I'm just going to call it inches per foot. And I'm going to hard code the value, of course, to 12. So that one's all set. Um, as we did in the previous exercises, what the guy's going to have us do is that we're going to like work with a beginning value that's hard-coded. And then we're going to take that hard-coded value and then allow it to become something that the user can input. So we're following that pattern. So given the fact that we're following that pattern, um, the thing that we're going to use here is, once again, as an integer, we're going to, the value that we're going to work against, eventually we're going to ask for, is the number of inches. Right now I'm going to set it to 86 inches just like the author did. We're also going to need a place to put the result of our calculation. So we're going to ask the user to input a number of inches, and we're going to convert it to feet and inches. So one thing that we're going to need is an integer for the number of feet. And then we'll need an integer for, I don't know, well, inches is already used, so what do we call it? Extra inches? Inches to <laughs> inches left. Okay, how about that? That's not a very descriptive thing. And then we need to do some math, right? So what's the math that we're doing here? How many? How do we figure out how many feet there are in a certain number of inches? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to divide by our constant. I mean... You might say to yourself as I'm doing this, is like, wouldn't I just hard code 12 here? Yep, you could. But the point is that he wants you to understand what is 
um, a constant and how to apply it. So that's how we get the number of feet. How do we get the number of inches that are left over? This is not too much different than one of the other problems that we just did, right? Yeah, that mod. Because everybody asks, what, what, what is mod good for? Well, mod's good for exactly this type of scenario where we're looking for what is left over. Okay, now you can hear a conversation from my students in the background. It wasn't me swearing, by the way. <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to do a little bit of verbose output here so the user knows what the heck we're talking about. And we're going to say inches, which is the number that was input. And, of course, we're going to describe that it's inches. Is, and we're going to concatenate, the number of feet that we calculate. So we're just putting in the variable. We're going to add in the description, feet and a space. We're going to drop in. I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to the next line here for this, folks. Inches left. And then just say inches. And I know like sometimes the output statements as I'm typing them, I keep in mind that I'm drawing from something I've already completed. So I already have all that logic worked out. Uh, but that sometimes takes a little bit of playing with just to get it to lay out correctly. Oh, I see a little mistake I made here. That should be a lowercase p. All right, so at this point, we have enough to test our math and our output. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a control S to save. And I'm going to hit the little play button here. Now, if you happen to be working in JGrasp, and I'm doing this for the benefit of people that might be watching the older videos, uh, the, the coding is all the same. The tool is a little bit different. Um, but, you know, essentially it, it is similar. You'll notice, though, that Eclipse is a little bit more Visual Studio-like in its kindness for helping you find problems. Whereas if I would have had this problem in JGrasp and I try to run it, I'm going to run it again just so you can see that you would get some sort of compiler output that looks like this. It tells you it's on line 14. Where's line 14? There it is. And it doesn't know what to do with it, but it does underline it. Really the correct way to do this here in Eclipse. Notice how I can hover over it, just the red underline. And this is the one we want. It needs to be lowercase. That's something that JGRASP doesn't do, but it would throw the compiler error and then you would figure it out. All right, so now that we have this part of the program complete, now we can move on to the second part. And you can see they want us to create basically a fresh program with a new name. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to come up here and on the source folder, I'm going to right click new class. I'm going to paste in that name and click finish. And then since, you know, the majority of our logic is already figured out, I mean, there's no reason why we just can't come in here and take that whole main method and drop it in. So that's what I'm doing. And really our only objective here, folks, is to accept the inches from the user. Once again, this is a pattern that we saw in the previous two exercises, so we're really just repeating that pattern. Um, the first thing that you're, you'll see that we're going to do is we got to get that input before we do the math, so we're going to create a scanner. I'm going to call it input of course, this right away is underlining, so I'm going to do my, I can either hover, import scanner, or in Eclipse, put your cursor at the end of the underlined word, hold down control, press space, it drops it in automatically. Whatever method you want to use. If you want to type it in, that's absolutely fine too. That's not a problem. 
One of the reasons why you use the automated tools is to keep yourself from making mistakes. All right, so this is our standard format for a scanner. We're going to write a, a prompt. So we're going to do a system out print, not print line. We want it to stay on the same line. And we're going to ask the user to please enter number of inches. On the line that follows, I'm going to take the variable inches. It's going to grab the input. And what kind of value are we grabbing from the keyboard? It's an integer. So we're going to use next int. And you notice another other nice thing about using Eclipse in this fashion is as it's going through this list, it kind of like tries to auto type or IntelliSense what you're doing. It also pulls up from the Java documentation the official explanation of what these uh, methods do. So our choice is next int. And then what I was showing to the people here in class uh, tonight, when I was doing it in the previous exercises, is here we declared inches and we hard-coded it. And a technique that programmers often use is if they're populating a variable for the very first time, sometimes they'll just declare it and populate it all in one fell swoop. And once again, I'm, I'm leaving this one here for reference because we put it there for a good reason before because we needed it to test our program. The other approach would be, of course, that you could just leave, excuse me, leave that alone uh, and just not assign it a value or give it a value of zero so that it doesn't throw errors during calculations if no values are entered. All right, so now that we have this part complete, let's go ahead and save the work again and hit the play button. And now it's prompting us, enter number of inches. It's good to try the value we already know the answer for. If you want to try it again, you can put in some different values like, um, I don't know, 154. And apparently that is 12 feet and 10 inches. All right, so if you are able to accomplish this successfully, you're all done. So you got exercise number six complete. Uh, that ends this video right now.